Hi, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals, and today we're going to run a sample of this stuff here that one of our customers sent. I'm not exactly sure what this is, but I think this is uh, some sort of shredded material that they've gone through their magnet separation, their air separation, uh, probably some eddy current stuff as well, and they're left with rocks, glass, hard plastic pieces, uh, you know, leftover copper wire, insulated copper wire, little tiny pieces of copper wire. And the goal here is we're going to run it through one of our hammer mills and we're going to try and ball up the copper wire, break up all the glass and the rocks down to small enough pieces that we can separate them on the table. And the copper and the metal should go over into the high grade. The plastic, ceramic, and rock should all go down into the waste. And we can hopefully concentrate out the valuable metal fraction from the waste fraction. And uh, we'll see how So it here's goes. the inside of the hammer mill. This is the 16 by 12. We've got four rows of five hammers. These are chrome heads in the hammers. Down here we have a screen that wraps all the way around the lower 180 degrees of the mill of the hammer swing. And right now this screen slot is a, about a 1.5 or a 2 millimeter slot. And our hope is, is that we can grind up the brittle stuff, the glass, the rocks, the, some of the hard plastic, and the copper will roll up into little balls or we'll actually be able to strip the copper wire from the uh, insulation and we'll liberate all that. It'll all go through the screen and then it'll separate out. <laughs> bucket here so it goes onto the table nice and evenly. Ideally you'd run the hammer mill wet and run it right onto the table just like this operation here. And you can see the light material including a lot of the plastic and the insulation from the wires are washing down the table into the waste. And if you look over into the concentrate side of the table all the copper and the metals are coming out into the number one and number two port. So this is working extremely well. All the light material is washing down the table. The copper is concentrating at the end of the grooves and coming up the table. There's some other heavy metal that the fine stuff is right at the leading edge. There's probably a little bit of brass and copper and maybe some steel. So I have a magnet here. We're going to check this stuff for steel. And there's a little bit in there, but very, very little. It's mostly non-ferrous metal. I stopped feeding the table so you can get kind of a snapshot here of where the copper goes. The copper comes across the top grooves here, makes a fan down, and then works its way up the table this way. The number one and the number two are almost pure metal. 
and the number three middlings will capture anything that overflows into the, the third port. And this can be rerun back onto the table if it's if it's running too much material or you're getting a little bit of copper and sand mixed together. But you can see here what's gathering in the number one port. It's pretty much just pure pure copper or pure metal. There's there's hardly any if any contamination in there. So I think it's a, a real successful test. I'm really happy with the results. Okay, so here's the results from running their stuff on the table. And this is the number one, the number two, and the number three. Uh, the number three is pretty much just sand. I don't, there's maybe a little bit of copper in there. If you wanted to run this on the table again or through the hammer mill again, you might be able to liberate and clean up a little bit of copper there. Um, but there's very little value that ended up in the number three middlings. The number two, the number two stuff here is, is really mostly metal. There might be the odd little piece of um, fine rock or glass that got in there, but you can see from the from the shot here, it's it's really mostly metal and little copper wires balled up. And then the number one stuff here, there's really hardly any contamination at all. It's all metal, mostly copper, and it seems like the bigger wires and some of the bigger pieces of metal made it up into the number one hole. These two together, I don't know, I haven't weighed them, but there's probably two or three pounds worth of metal there if not more. So there's a substantial amount of weight here, even though the volume's not very big because it's all metal. So I think it works fantastic. I think it's a great test. Uh, the results are, are really encouraging. Today we're gonna run three different samples that a customer sent to us. And these look like they're all samples from uh, electronics recycling. This is the first sample we're gonna run. It has a lot of, uh, the customer said, ferrite dust and rare earth metals in it but you can also see there's some little copper wires and um, some other materials that we're going to try and separate by density this is the second sample these two are i think together this is just a coarser fraction and it looks like either ground up circuit boards or some sort of electronics recycling the customer was uh, a little closed-lipped about exactly where these came from and then this is the third bag, I think, which is the same as this, just a finer screen fraction. Uh, but there's a lot of copper wire in it, some plastic, and I don't know if he's if he's capturing uh, aluminum or what out of this. But we're going to run it on our four foot by eight foot shaker table and see what metals we can separate from the plastics and the other weights. We've wetted the material down a little bit so it's not so hydrophobic. But if you take dry material, especially electronics waste, and try and run it on the table, it oftentimes will float. Now, when we run new samples like this, I like to run slowly start out with because I'm not quite sure how the material is going to react on the table. Okay, so we've run our shaker table a little bit here and you can see the big band of black ferrite that's actually dense enough that it's working its way up onto the cleaning plane and down into the number one concentrate uh, port. But you can see this finer gray stuff here which is probably lead or tin working its way up onto the cleaning plane, coming down into a nice band right into the number one con. And down below the ferrite, this is probably a, a aluminum or your lighter base metals. And the copper wire, surprisingly enough, it, it's, it has a mess surface area that it, it won't settle down into the grooves and the ferrite. So you're actually, you're, a lot of your fine copper wire is coming down into your number three middlings and your finer copper and some of your pins are coming down into the number one and number two mix. So we're actually getting pretty good separation on the table. 
Uh, one of the advantages of the ferrite is it is magnetic, so without too much work, you could pull it out with a magnet fairly easily. So I'm, I'm not too worried about separating the, the ferrite from the rest of the material, but you're getting really good separation of the dense, heavy base metals, either lead or tin, and the aluminum uh, is uh, separating very nicely. So we'll keep running the sample. I'm looking here for any uh, precious metals. I don't see any yet, but we'll run a little bit more. We'll stop the table and we'll take a look at uh, some of the separation we're getting. Okay, we're almost done with our bucket. And we've stopped the table now so we can see if there's any precious metals at the leading edge here. And I don't see any precious metals, um, but you can see the, the clear band of gray that's coming down into the high grade. And you're starting to get uh, the, I don't know if these are like uh, electronic pins or what, but they're, they're coming into the high grade as well. Again, I'm, the, the ferrite is coming into the number one as well, but I think we're going to rerun the number one back on the table and see if we can clean this up a little bit and uh, isolate this light gray dense material from the ferrite. So we'll finish our, uh, our bucket here and uh, we'll take a look at the number one and maybe rerun it back on. Here's the number one port from running our first sample and we're gonna try and rerun on the table and clean up some of that gray dense material from the ferrite. We've got a lot of ferrite in that, uh, in that first run. Um, so I'm gonna run a little bit slower on the table and see if we can clean up some of that gray material a little bit better. second sample and we've mixed the two together there's a larger fraction and a smaller fraction and this one has some plastics in it that are actually light enough to float so I'm just decanting the water off the sample after we got it wet a lot of the plastics are so light they float and uh, we'll run the sample and see what we get all right we're about a third of the way done with our second sample and this looks a lot more like what we're used to seeing when we grind up boards. Uh, a lot of plastic waste going down into the tailings. And then the heavier metals, the copper and the probably lead and tin solder going off into the high grade. The table's doing a really good job of separating the light plastic and the waste flowing down into the tailings from the heavier metals that are working their way over to the high grade boards. Because there's so much waste in this, I can feed it a lot faster. So this is our second sample. We're just about finished running, and I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but right along the leading edge, there's little tiny pieces of gold all the way down here, going into the number one port. And that gray silver band is probably another lead or tin solder. Maybe it's a silver solder, I'm not sure. Um, but the, the gold is right at the leading edge of that because it's the most dense and it's working its way right down into the number one port. So um, it'll be interesting to see what the assays are uh, from these samples and see if we're recovering most of the gold in our number one port. So we've started to brush down the table and uh, usually when you brush down the table you get your best showing of gold and you can see right along the leading edge of this gray stuff there's gold pieces coming all the way down there. 